Good afternoon or morning or evening or whenever it is that you watch these videos, Sixth Grade Band. Sorry, no guest speaker this week. I was busy delivering flowers for Mother's Day to relatives, so I didn't have a chance to uh, invite anyone in for a guest speaker. So you're stuck with me this week. So we have a couple topics this week. Um, tone color, timbre, dynamics. Tone color and timbre, though, are basically interchangeable. It's just the unique sound that your instrument makes. Um, so let's talk about that for a moment. Tone color. Like I said, is this is the same thing as timbre, spelled T-I-M-B-R-E. Looks like timbre, but it's the R and the E are reversed. In music, it's what um, makes the band sound interesting. So in fifth grade band, we started on six basic instruments, um, flute, clarinet, saxophone, trumpet, trombone, and percussion. And then when sixth grade, we added, sometimes we call them color instruments. So we added oboe and bassoon, bass clarinet. Um, we didn't have a tuba or baritone in our sixth grade band, but those kind of instruments, those are all the color instruments that we add in sixth grade. French horn. Yes, we have three French horns, which is awesome, because French horn adds a lot of different kind of sounds to our band. But our current seventh grade band has the best um, instrumentation. They have everything. They have all the color instruments, with one exception. They do not have anyone to play bass clarinet. So those kind of things help a band sound, sound different, gives a little bit different color to the sound. Um, I know that our bass clarinet player and bassoon player have experienced that their parts double the trombone much of the time, but it does add a different sound. And they're both working on playing louder because we sometimes can't hear them. And then on the same hand, the oboe part often doubles the, the flute part, sometimes an octave lower, sometimes they play the same notes, but it adds such a different sound that it makes, it enriches the sound of the band in the upper woodwind section. As you get older, oboe, bassoon, baritone, tuba, all these extra instruments, tenor shacks as well. Um, the parts will get more independent and a little more difficult and some solos here and there because those are um, added color instruments to, to a concert band. Think of um, how people dress to think of tone color. People that dress in one color, monochromatic people sometimes dress goth. They're all basically black, one color. Um, People that wear a lot of different bright colors, there's a lot more going on when you look at them. Same thing with movies. If you watch a black and white movie, you know, I watch a lot of that during this quarantine because there's not a whole lot of stuff you can do outside the house. But just think about the movie, if it's black and white or color, and there's no music. Music adds so much. Sometimes watch part of a scary movie, but turn off the sound. It's, and you, it's like, nah, it's not so scary because the, the tone colors of the instruments make such a huge difference with the sound. So because we don't have a Barry Sax or a tuba in our baritone in our sixth grade band doesn't mean our band's going to sound bad. This, those instruments give it a little bit more depth. So one of your assignments this week is to do a written worksheet. So I found this this worksheet. It's two pages long. There's pictures of instruments. A lot of them are, um, there's a lot of percussion, there's some color instruments. And if we were doing this in class, I would have had a word box. So you could just look at the word box and pick the instrument. Because you have internet available and you can look these up, I didn't give you any, any of the um, answers except a couple. Because there's four instruments on this worksheet that look very similar. So the first one is you know, when you get the worksheet posted on Sunday. So it should be on. You may, some of you may see the worksheet before you see this video. But number five is a tenor horn. I don't know if you can see it on here, but it looks like a skinny tuba. So that's not something common that we have in Ohio or in this part of the country, and it's not a instrument that's used very often. But we do use baritone, tuba, and euphonium. A lot of times you'll hear baritone and uh, euphonium used simultaneously. And on this worksheet, there's a little bit of a difference. The euphonium is shorter and fatter, and the euphonium is skinnier. But the euphonium looks a lot like number five. So I've given you these three answers and you have to figure out which one's which. So tuba is going to be the biggest and fattest looking instrument. Euphonium is, is short and fat, um, similar to the tuba, and then baritone. So those are a little bit confusing, so I want to give you those answers. And also, well, people that don't watch the video all the way through might not know those answers. So those of you that watch it, good for you. So you're going to get a couple of answers on this worksheet. There's 32 instruments. Um, many of you were were able to, on the enharmonic lesson, you were able to, to get this, put your answers on it, and resubmit it. That's great. If you can't do that, number a piece of paper from 1 to 32 and write the answer next to it. Do not take off for spelling. 
so do your best to spell it phonetically if you're not sure. Um, and look them up. Look up concert band on Google and the concert band instruments, and it'll give you some answers, uh, some place to start. Now, a couple of them are families of instruments. So they're right here. The family of instrument, just write the blank family. And then that, that's fine. You don't have to name each individual one for that one. And then on the second page, there's one for yeah, the last one, the family of instruments. Oops, wrong way. Family of instruments, just say the whatever family that is. You don't have to label the individual ones. You also do not have to label the instrument family. Just write the name of the instruments and then send that back in. That'll be due Friday. Um, because I have a two-page worksheet for you this week, I made your playing test a little bit shorter. So if you look in your book, um, make sure you warm up on scales, chromatic scales, whatever you need to do. Um, 6.8 is your written assignment, I mean, sorry, your playing test for this week. It's called Yankee Doodle Came and Went. So it's a song that everyone should know, Yankee Doodle, but what I want you to do is really, really exaggerate the tone color. It starts off piano, it's only eight measures long, so it goes, starts off piano, goes all the way to fortissimo, back to pianissimo. So you want to make it sound like someone is start walking from far away, as they pass you and get closer, it gets louder, and then as they go back away, it gets quieter. Um, for percussion, if you have your drum pad or snare drum at home, I would like you to play this on that um, instrument. If you don't, then you'll have to play the bell part. Now, if we were at school, you would have percussionists, you would have different mallets that you could get softer and louder, so do the best you can with the mallets that you have at home. Um, just play quieter at the beginning, as loud, louder, and then back off when you get to the end, just like the woodwinds and brass are going to do for theirs. Um, you'll be graded on notes, key signatures, make sure you're playing all the right notes and rhythms. It's not that difficult, like I said, but there's a lot of eighth notes. And the tendency is, um, when, you, when you're playing quiet, Quiet doesn't quiet does not mean slower. So make sure you don't slow down when you get to the end of it. I'm going to play it for you on a couple different instruments. Um, I'll, I'll play an oboe first since that's my favorite. I read it. So sometimes when I'm practicing or playing in a band or orchestra, I will number my dynamics. So in measure one, I might call that pianissimo measure a one dynamic, level one. And then you only have four measures to get to fortissimo. So then measure two is two, measure three is three, and measure four is the loudest. And then the second half of measure four, maybe you can even go up to a five because it does pop up to fortissimo there. And then you just count backwards to to get quieter at the end. Well, so those of you that play clarinet have a pretty easy time because clarinet can play really soft. Well, no, flutes will have a harder time in anything playing dynamic contrast, but do the best you can. And while I'm talking about flutes, Claire, I did put a note in here that if you would like to play this test on your piccolo, you're welcome to. So let me see if I can get this done on the clarinet. <laughs> trouble with my high B but otherwise it's a pretty easy job to do on clarinet but make sure you practice it a few times before you record and the, so this lesson is on tone color and dynamics so make sure that you do this exaggerate it practice a couple times maybe record yourself listen to it and think man you could probably exaggerate more and get a little bit better in the dynamic range um, learn the rhythms first keep it nice and steady use a metronome if you want to um, it's pretty much moderato, so you don't need to go too fast. Some of you are playing your tests super fast. You don't need to do that. I do want to talk a little bit about your camera angle. Some of you did an awesome job. Some of you, you had someone record it for you from up above, which those were really good, easy for me to see. A couple of you had your cameras down too low, and I couldn't see your instrument at all. 
So make sure it's maybe off to the side. I had a couple of really nice uh, flute videos that I could see your hands and it was really, really awesome. If you're kind of camera shy, put the, put the camera on your instrument and your fingers. I don't necessarily need to see your face, although I do like to make sure that you have the right embouchure. But if you're too chicken to record yourself, then you can just put your camera on your instruments. Um, thank you for everyone that showed up for the Zoom meeting last week. That was the most we ever had for sixth grade. Really appreciate it. But next time, I am going to turn off the chat because you were spending more, more time talking to each other than, than talking to me. But anyways, it was great to see all of you at that last one. Um, I haven't scheduled one for this week yet. I'll, I'll be doing that um, either later today or tomorrow. Today's Sunday. Tomorrow's Monday. Um, I think that's it. Have fun with it. Um, if you have any questions, it's a worksheet, please email or send a message through the classroom. And have a great week. We'll see you at our Zoom meeting this week. Bye, everybody.